Hey, what's going on again, Jeff Fans? Um, first off, thank you so much for uh, all the new subscribers, all the feedback from the last couple videos. Definitely appreciate it. Um, the one thing I didn't get to address in the last few videos, because um, you know we did talk about uh, the Thursday night game against Cleveland and Todd Bowles a lot and the coaching staff, I didn't talk about Mike McCagnan. And this is something that has been bothering me for probably at least two seasons now, where Jeff fans just have a tendency when we lose a game, and, and only when we lose a game, do we bring up Mike McCagnan's name. There are several websites, podcasts, you name it, where we only hear his name after a loss. Not after a win, not when young guys are playing well, not when Jamal Adams is all over the field, not when Darren Lee is taking a huge step from year two to year three. Only when we lose do we hear Mike McCagney's name. And the one issue, the, the main issue I have with it is that we never get any context, okay, when it comes to his draft picks. People just say, oh, this guy's gone, this guy's gone, not realizing that most of his picks, most of his failed picks are late round picks, okay? You look at his first round, he's four for four. He found an anchor player at each level of the defense, Leo, Lee, Adams, and a franchise quarterback. Please tell me another general manager that has done that, okay? You look at his rounds two and rounds three. Obviously, Hackenberg, Devin Smith, <laughs> complete bust. We don't even need to get into that. Um, the, the one guy that he did hit, Marcus May, looked great last year. He just needs to get back on the field. Not worried about him at all. I think he's going to be a, a great compliment for Adams for the next couple of years. And then you look in the third round, obviously, uh, again, Lorenzo Malden did not work out. Jordan Jenkins, though, he's starting to play really well, has a couple strip sacks already. Uh, Nathan Shepard, a day one starter. So, again, he, he, he was two out of four, pretty much, if you want to look at, you know, all of his third round picks. So, when you look at that success rate, how does he rank with the other general managers, Okay. And I haven't looked at all the picks. I don't have the time to do that. But I'm willing to bet that he's probably better than average when you look at, especially first round, maybe not second round, probably third round, two out of four. Um, and, and then obviously with the mid-round picks, he's not done a good job. All right, I'm not going to defend him on the mid-round picks. But we talk about mid-round picks as Jeff fans like they're first-rounders. Oh my God, he released a fifth round pick in Dylan Donahue. Holy crap. Like, seriously? And again, our Darius Stewart, third round pick. I, I get that. That was the other one that didn't fail. Uh, I'm sorry, that didn't succeed. But he's at least on the practice squad right now. If, if we remember, uh, Quincy, he got released, uh, you know, I, I think in his first training camp. And then, you know, he didn't do anything his first year. Second year, he started to blossom a little bit. Who knows if, you know, we'll see something like that with Stewart in the future. But I, I just think we pay so much attention to these mid to late round picks that haven't worked out and we fail to realize that he has put together such a nice young core for this team moving forward while maintaining all this cap flexibility a hundred million dollars we're going to have going into next offseason all right not to mention some great trades that he's done you know getting rid of prior for demario getting rid of sheldon for a second round pick and curse you know he's found under the radar guys to make up for those mid-round picks that haven't worked out. You know, guys like Neil Sterling, finding an, un uh, an undrafted free agent like Robbie Anderson, Frankie Louvu, Doug Middleton. You know, you look up and down the roster, there are some good hold-the-fort guys. Yes, in the draft, he hasn't done well at wide receiver. He hasn't addressed pass rush, or, or at least he hasn't succeeded on it, you know, with Malden and Donahue. Um, he hasn't really addressed the offensive line, even though he did trade up and get Brandon Shell, you know, a starter already at right tackle. So, again, there's been a lot of ups and downs, but to me, the biggest thing is the first round, okay? You can't mess up the first round, and he's four for four in the first round, okay? So to me, it's just funny, again, that, you know, we never hear much about his successes, right? People actually say, oh, well, it's the first round. You should succeed. You, you should get those picks right. It should be a given. Have we seen some of the first round picks that have been made? Have we heard some of the takes? Guys that have wanted Paxton Lynch and, and, and all these other busts, we forget those. But again, we pay so much attention to what he doesn't do well in the mid to late rounds. I, I think it's foolish. I think it's stupid. 
But again, Jeff fans are going to be Jeff fans. I I'm not saying he's done well in the mid to late rounds. He obviously has to do better if we're ever going to take that next step. But again, year two of a rebuild. We got a lot of nice young pieces in place. Got a lot of cap space moving forward. So I, I couldn't be more satisfied with the direction of the team. Maybe I'm missing something. But again, we'll see what happens the rest of the season. And then we'll see what happens next offseason. You know, we have all of our picks minus the second rounder. But we got the additional third from the Bridgewater trade. Another great move by McCagnon. So, you know, between that and all the cap space, I like where we're headed.